Hey Anime Stark fam! Welcome back to the channel, your go-to for all things anime. I'm pumped to bring you part 2 of the Broken Hero Deku X Harem series. We're diving back into the chaos, romance, and heroism. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button now and let's jump into the action together. This is Anime Stark, and this is where the anime magic happens. The teacher left them the remaining class time free to train or plan for the much-awaited sports festival. A year ago, it was one of the biggest events, held just after the defeat of the Paranormal Liberation Army and the League of Villains. Izuku couldn't participate due to being badly injured after defeating Tomura and his teacher. This contributed to nobody recognizing the name Deku or Midoriya Izuku. The media focused on his former class and the upcoming event. Kendo, Midoriya-san. Izuku, president, he didn't continue, hearing the whispers in his mind urging him to end his life, do you need something? Kendo, would you like to train? You need a challenge, and I need to test my techniques. What do you say? She smiled at the green-haired boy who only looked at the ground. Izuku, I don't know, nerves took over, and he quickly walked away towards the academy, overwhelmed by emotions for the day. Kendo, I saw this coming, she sighed a bit defeated, dealing with her new teammate was challenging, a challenge she would undoubtedly overcome. Tetsu Tetsu, Kendo, I have an idea, the metallic guy suddenly appeared with a wide grin. Meanwhile, Class A was also informed about this year's sports festival. Some saw the opportunity to shine again, while others considered it a fun time. Their last year was a chance for the world to glimpse the next top 30 heroes. Aizawa, don't relax for anything, this year, I have something prepared for you, he smiled ominously, ready to give them a tough time. Mina, what do you mean, sensei? The pink girl spoke just as she was about to jump towards Bakugo. Aizawa, I have a special assignment for this month, and if you don't complete it, you'll be expelled, the surprises were immediate, and their teacher sometimes seemed to hate them. Toru, he can't do that, the teacher looked at her angrily, and the invisible girl shrank in her place. Aizawa, alright, there will be two 4,000 word essays on Quirk's history and hero creation due the day before the festival, murmurs of injustice filled the room until someone had the audacious idea to motivate their classmates. Kaminari, guys, calm down. We're the best of the best, no one can compete with us. Mina is agile enough to overcome anything, Kirishima can endure a building falling on him, not to mention Todoroki or Kachan, he smiled at his classmates, trying to convince them. Momo, Class B is powerful, don't you remember two years ago? They will be hard to beat, she spoke calmly, knowing that her rival was training at the moment to overcome any obstacle. Kaminari, nonsense, it will be easy. Just a few obstacles on the way, right, Kachan? He looked at his friend, who was irritated by what their teacher had done. Katsuki, shut up, Pikachu, every minute you spend talking is time wasted, he said, starting to think about how to handle the assignment. Kaminari, sorry. With this, Aizawa could finally confirm how changed his class was. Could they surpass not only class B but also Midoriya? Or would they fall under their weight? He just had to wait. So, this month began with the promise of a great event. As soon as the event was announced, some second and first year classrooms started betting on who would win this year in the third year events. Bakugo Katsuki was the favorite since he had already won the previous two years, followed by Todoroki Shoto and then Tokoyami Fumikage, who generally came in third. The surprise they would experience would be unforgettable. The evening after the announcement of the sports festival, Izuku was dragged by Yui and Kamakiri to the USJ. They had something planned for the green-haired boy who didn't understand what was happening. He just went along, knowing that it silenced the voice inside his head for a while. It was amusing that the voice was wrong more often than not. Surprisingly, Kendo was there with a calm smile, and beside her was Tetsu Tetsu, who had bags with him. Something was up, and the green-haired boy didn't know if it was good or bad. He still distrusted everyone around him, even Yui and Kamakiri. Could he consider them his friends? Izuku, what are we supposed to do? He spoke with suspicion, ready to run in the opposite direction. Tetsu Tetsu, I had a really good idea that I'd like you to participate in, Midoriya, he smiled at the green-haired boy, who remained on guard. Izuku, what is it? He spoke seriously, ready to leave. Kendo, we're going to play hide-and-seek tag, she smiled at the confused green-haired boy, all our classmates are inside the USJ with balloons filled with paint. We have to find them and hit them with a balloon before they hit us. Simple, right? She handed a balloon to Izuku, who looked incredulous. Izuku, no thanks, I'd rather go train, he left the balloon with Kendo before he had to dodge one coming from inside the facility, but what? Tetsu Tetsu, 
Shota and Reiko make a great combo, don't you think? He smiled at the green-haired boy, who narrowly avoided the second balloon impact. Kendo, this is not just for fun, Midoriya, it helps us improve our reflexes and environmental awareness. You can train, enjoy with friends, and have fun all at once. What do you say? Izuku, he thought for a moment, during which the four from class B looked at him hopefully. Yui, Midoriya, the raven-haired girl touched his shoulder, and the green-haired boy looked at her in surprise, if you don't want to do it, it's okay. We like you, and we hope you'll help us with this, she smiled at the green-haired boy, who looked at the ground. Izuku, I want to do it, he admitted with his gaze lowered, trying to hide his embarrassment. It took more courage than he had right now to say that. Kendo, very well, thanks for helping us, Midoriya, she smiled at the green-haired boy, who just nodded without looking at her. Kamakiri, how will we divide ourselves? The green-eyed girl's smile gave a bad feeling, she already had an action plan. They spent two hours going back and forth, looking for their classmates divided into two groups, Kendo, Izuku, and Yui on one side, and Tetsu Tetsu and Kamakiri on the other. It resulted in everyone laughing and playing in a big free-for-all battle, with Midoriya protecting his two companions with all he had. It's not that they couldn't defend themselves, but he wanted to feel useful. Yui, Midoriya-san, the black-haired girl launched herself at the green-haired boy, both avoiding the balloons sent by Ibera's vines. Izuku, thanks. Kodai, he spoke a bit dazed as the black-haired girl smiled at him while still on top of him. Yui, I told you, you can call me Yui, we're friends after all, she got up to help the green-haired boy. Izuku, are we friends? He said with great surprise, forgetting where they were, and soon they were hit by a barrage of paint-filled balloons. Yui, hey, we had a moment here she spoke angrily, receiving only a balloon in the face. Manoma, ha ha ha, he laughed before the black-haired girl hit him in the face with a balloon. Kanoko, pfff, she tried to hold back her laughter when she got hit in the head with a balloon, hey. Soon, class B, amid laughter, threw balloons at each other until one landed on the head of the dazed green-haired boy, and everyone looked at him with a friendly smile, waiting for his reaction. Izuku, he looked at the ground before looking at his classmates. Nana's voice echoed in his head. Nana, just give them a chance, Izuku, they deserve it. Kendo, Midoriya-san? She looked worriedly at her classmate, who kept his head down. Izuku, without saying anything, he threw a balloon at the president, who was surprised. Kendo, Midoriya? He continued until he saw slight spasms in the green-haired boy, are you okay? Izuku, pfff, he held his stomach before bursting into laughter, ha ha ha, that laughter surprised everyone who looked at him, that was fun. Finally, after months of loneliness, with no chance of anything other than indifferent looks, something had finally changed. Perhaps using UA facilities as a playground wasn't the best idea, but at least they saw Midoriya smile for a moment. It was working, slowly breaking the cold shell he hides in, they were on the right track. Sen, you know, it could have been worse, he said, trying to lighten the mood. Sensei didn't like them using the USJ as their playground and they were currently cleaning the place. Awase, how exactly? The black-haired guy was hanging from Izuku's black whips while cleaning a part of the ceiling, he didn't know how they had managed to reach such a height. Sen, we could be cleaning entire classrooms without using our quirks or maybe scrubbing the bathrooms with a toothbrush, he shivered at the thought. Yui, you're exaggerating a bit, she said on Izuku's back, who was slowly descending to easily clean the building where most of the paint landed. Kendo, stop talking and work to finish quickly she spoke forcefully, and everyone continued with their tasks, cleaning what they could. None of them realized they were being watched the whole time by the two third-year teachers and the director himself, who was quite pleased with how things were going. Seeing Midoriya making significant progress in just a month was gratifying. Nezu, Aizawa, how are things in 3A? He asked without taking his eyes off the screen. Kamakiri and Juzo had started another fun mess, causing the president's anger and forcing Midoriya to intervene a bit. Aizawa, exactly the same as always, exceptional grades and extensive training keeping them disciplined, he said, tired of the day. Nezu, haven't they asked about the empty seat? Aizawa, I suppose they think it's for Shinso, and out of respect, we left it. Nezu, well, he said with a touch of grace, the students were in another paint battle, Vlad, it's your turn. Vlad King, in a minute, director, he left without knowing whether to feel proud of his class or want to punish them for the mess. As the class B teacher left, the place fell into a somewhat awkward silence. The class A teacher didn't think it was a good idea to ask about his former student, 
it seems somewhat hypocritical after practically leaving him to his fate, rotting in his misery. His internal debate ended when the last person the director wanted to see at that moment entered. All Might, Izawa Kun, director, it's good to find you, he smiled at his colleague and his superior, having a very good idea he wanted to share. Nezu, we're busy at the moment, Toshinori, we'll talk another time, the cold tone surprised both teachers, who looked at him in amazement. All Might, it's important, director, he tried to sound serious, failing because the impression didn't allow it. Nezu, have you finished training your successor, Toshinori? Without dropping the serious tone, he asked, causing nerves in the former symbol of peace. All Might, about that, nerves consumed him, how could he say he wanted to change successors due to the lack of progress with Midoriya? Nezu, if it's not about that responsibility, All Might, you can leave, the American was more surprised, but he didn't disobey and left, followed by Aizawa, who needed to find a place to sleep. Night came, and with it, the tired Class B finally entered their dormitories. Starting the second paint war in the middle of cleaning wasn't a good idea, they ended up worse and had to clean without using their quirks under the supervision of Vlad King and Number 13, exhausting hours, and they had barely eaten anything. Juzo, how come Midoriya and Kendo are still as fresh as lettuce? He said, lying on the sofa, watching his president and his friend making sandwiches for everyone. Tetsu Tetsu, think about it this way, both of them train excessively, put in the most effort, and even train on the verge of collapse. It's normal for them to have more strength and endurance, he murmured, almost falling asleep on the floor. Kanoko, I'm doing pretty well, she said cheerfully while drinking a juice bottle. The chestnut-haired girl had done something her classmates called unfair. Setsuna, I still say using Midoriya as your horse isn't fair, the green-haired girl complained, and the chestnut-haired girl just stuck out her tongue. Kanoko, hey, I'm not made for such extensive tasks, if Midoriya-san hadn't brought me, I would have collapsed halfway, she pouted indignantly just when Kendo and Midoriya entered with two trays of food. Izuku, you guys need more training, you can't endure more than two hours of hard work without a quirk. You're too dependent, he spoke bluntly, causing a massive depressive aura. Setsuna, if you're so strong without using your power, how about training us? She smiled at the green-haired boy, who remained static, I was just kidding, Midoriya, you don't have to do it if you don't want to, she hurried to say, looking angry at her president. Izuku, he thought about it for a moment before taking a bite of the sandwich, I I, I guess I could give it a try, he said with embarrassment. Juzo, are you serious, buddy? He spoke excitedly, and the green-haired boy nodded timidly. Tetsu Tetsu, thanks, Midoriya. I promise to give it my all not to disappoint, he exclaimed with excitement, this year would be the one to finally defeat Kirishima if they happen to meet. Izuku, I'll try not to disappoint you all, he spoke nervously, he had never trained someone like he was supposed to do? Kendo, Midoriya-san, she gently took him by the shoulder, pulling the green-haired boy out of his mental fog, if you need help with anything, say it. We're here to help, she smiled at the green-haired boy, who just nodded. Izuku, I. I would like you to help me, President, the surprised orange-haired girl nodded as the green-haired boy took her arm, going to the kitchen. Yanagi, he's progressing very well, she said with a half-eaten sandwich. Setsuna, looks like Kendo wants to take Yui's place as a great friend, she joked a bit, making the black-haired girl stand up a bit indignant. Yui, I don't think that's it, she went to investigate, followed by Class B, who wanted to know what was going on. Izuku, you guys are good at spying, it's bad, he spoke without even looking at them, too red from summoning the courage to drag the orange-haired girl with him to the kitchen. Yanagi, you never cease to amaze us, Midoriya-san, she was the first to leave, it didn't matter anymore. Dot Ibera, I apologize for such an action on my part, Midoriya-san, she came out apologetically. Izuku, it doesn't matter, I suppose. We'll talk later, President, he ran up the stairs, too much attention for one day. Setsuna, is it okay if I ask? She spoke playfully to her friend, who sighed, I'll take that as a no. Good night. That night, Izuku slept happily just by touching the mattress. Emotional, mental, and physical exhaustion finally caught up with him, ending up where he always did, in the core of one for all, with Nana smiling from ear to ear. The green-haired boy felt tempted to hug the shadow of the argument, looking at Nana so happy. Izuku, that's scary, he clung to the shadow, which was smaller than usual in his mental space. Nana, I'm not scary, she yelled indignantly at the green-haired boy, who put the shadow as a shield, don't think I won't hit this idiot. Show some respect, muttered the conscience indignantly. Izuku, whatever, what am I supposed to do here? He asked, sitting on the hypothetical floor. Nana, 
I just wanted to see your progress, Izuku, I'm glad you finally have a friend, she hugged the green-haired boy, who only tried to remove her without success. Just wait, and you'll see how they abandon you as always, he said with hatred in his voice, to which Nana only blew at him in an attempt to make him leave. Nana, don't pay attention to him, Izuku, you'll see how they don't leave, she smiled at the green-haired boy, who didn't look entirely convinced, have confidence, she pushed him lightly, and the green-haired boy shot into the darkness just as something sounded outside, it was time to wake up. Hatsu May didn't expect this when she arrived at her workshop. The robot's memory data indicated that it wasn't just anyone who did it. A robot designed to withstand Dynamite's howitzer impact couldn't handle the damage from UA's weakest freckled boy. Despite triple checking, the data kept showing the same result. Midoriya Izuku had generated such force that theoretically only a meteor of one and a half meters in diameter could match it. He destroyed his best creation with one blow just a day after receiving the machine. Something was wrong. Dynamite is supposed to be the pinnacle of heroes at UA, an unreachable mountain that others aspire to but never surpass, no matter how much the rest strives. But what Hatsum was seeing not only reached the same scale but far exceeded the current top three heroes. If she had to compare both power mountains, Midoriya is the damn Mount Everest, and Bakugo is just a small mound in the middle of nowhere, power and control united in perfect harmony. She would get to the bottom of this. None of what she had been told was true. What was she supposed to do now? Vlad King, Hatsum? The teacher watched as the inventor hid while observing Class B and during rapid blows from Izuku, without even using his quirk. Mei, Sensei, she said without looking at him. Her eyes were currently analyzing every minimal movement of the green-haired boy, who had just knocked down Jirota in his beastly state. The freckled boy's self-imposed tests were strange and dangerous for his own good. Vlad King, what are you doing? The pink-haired girl just took some notes before continuing to watch Izuku. Mei, there's something I don't understand. If it's said that Midoriya is the worst hero in terms of strength and control because he has more destructive force and more control than the blonde bomb guy? She asked without losing a second as Izuku caught Kanoko in a compromising position. Vlad King, you know, you can approach if you want, as long as you don't distract them. The inventor widened her view a bit with her quirk and nodded to follow the teacher, who was checking the progress of his students. Kendo, Sensei, the whole class looked at the hero and his inventor companion, who approached the green-haired boy, touching him a lot. Vlad King, the inventor here has a certain experiment, so she'll be paying attention to you and your training. The class watched as the inventor examined Izuku's abdomen in great detail, causing a blush in his female classmates. She was touching the green-haired boy too much, and he did nothing to stop her. Continue with what you're doing as if she's not here. Yui, it's hard to do when she's violating Midoriya-san with her fingers, she said annoyed at how the pink-haired girl was touching her friend. Izuku, oh no, that's just how she is. She gathers data from my body to make her inventions more precise, he said completely relaxed with the pink-haired girl on his back, giving a few punches to his shoulders. Kanoko, hey! That's my spot, she spoke indignantly with a pout. May, interesting, she jumped to the side and muttered to herself while writing quickly. Ibera, are you okay, Midoriya-san? The plant-haired girl went to make sure her teammate had no injuries, sighing when she saw that he was completely fine. Izuku, can we continue training? Hatsum won't do anything, I assure you, he walked past the pink-haired girl and went in front of the class, let's continue assessing your strengths to help you. Sen, alright, it's my turn, he approached the freckled boy and attacked with a right punch easily avoidable for Izuku, then made him fall with a kick, I saw it coming. Izuku, you guys have almost no foundation on how to fight beyond using your quirks to make victory easier. We have a lot to do, he sighed tiredly. He didn't want so much responsibility. Kamakiri, I'll put on some music for training, the green guy went for the equipment to work better. Meanwhile, in the support course, Uraka and Ida were heading there to get a gadget that Hatsum had promised to make, a special analyzer to become stronger and faster. They wouldn't let the assignments interfere with their training. Kaminari might be very confident, but the class president knew they shouldn't trust it and had to be better than they already were. There was just a slight flaw in their plans. The inventor was not in her workshop, and it seemed none of her classmates knew exactly where she had gone. They could wait for her to deliver the device, but that would be a waste of time they could use for their assignments. They didn't want the teacher to expel them for it. Uraka, Ida kun, why don't you go look for her? I'll stay here and let you know if she shows up. Ida, sounds like a good plan, Ochako chan, the class president ran off, thinking about where to look first. He didn't know the pink haired girl well enough to say where she might be if not in her workplace. 
It took two hours to go through the academy from top to bottom, and no trace of the inventor. Exhausted, he went to the last place he hoped she would be, Gamma Jim. To his surprise, she was sitting on the side of Class B, analyzing a fight between the class president and someone he couldn't see. Ida, Hatsum, he shouted, drawing the attention of the class, who quickly formed a barrier to protect Midoriya. He was the ace up their sleeve, to be revealed only at the festival. They would show that the great Midoriya Izuku was still here. Kendo, do you need something, Class A president? She spoke with clear irritation and hatred in her words. Ida, I need to talk to Hatsum. There was an invention we needed, he said a bit confused by the attitude of the orange-haired girl, is something wrong? Kendo, Class B matters, it's none of your business, she said, going to her group, which was between angry and nervous. In the background, Izuku was eating a sandwich like a good boy. Ida, I don't understand, he approached the eccentric inventor to chat normally, Hatsum. May, huh? Yeah, I don't have time now, she continued on her laptop. Midoriya's data was far superior to Bakugo, Todoroki, and Kirishima. Without using their quirks, it was clear who would win. Ida, but what we asked for is important, he said impatient and somewhat angry. May, sorry, but I don't remember you leaving your request anywhere, she typed quickly, checking her orders. There was nothing from class 3A. Ida, what are you saying? We always ask in front of you. It's your duty to do what we ask. You're our inventor, he spoke angrily. May, correction, I'm an inventor who has requests from heroes, not just from your class. If you have a request, don't skip the rules, she continued with her work, making the 3A president look at her furiously. Ida, we're the best class at UA, and you prefer to waste time with simple fifth-rate heroes like them? He said, pointing at class B, which was getting angry. May, to be the best, your statistics have been declining since the fight against the League of Villains. They are superior, and yet they make requests without believing they are the best, she spoke without looking at him. Jirota, what do you mean, the best, huh? He entered his beast mode and wanted to go punch the idiot who didn't reconsider his anger. Ida, we were the ones who defeated the League of Villains, or have you forgotten? What did you do, huh? He shouted euphorically at the class, which wanted to hit him. On that occasion, they prioritized saving lives over fighting. Juzo, we did what heroes do, and we saved people, he replied coldly to the bespectacled guy, who chuckled amused. Ida, excuses from an idiot who is beneath us. You wouldn't even touch me, and that's without my quirk active, he mocked the class, who were about to attack. Come on, what are you waiting for? I can deal with yo he couldn't continue because a black whip made him hit the ceiling with such force that he vomited his lunch before falling to the ground unconscious. The class and May turned to look at Izuku, who had a serious expression. Kendo, Midoriya-san? Her classmate had just protected the class, or was it just a reflex? Izuku, no one should speak like that about good people. I won't let anyone be treated as less, especially if it's against class 3B, he said seriously, and the shocked class just smiled. Ida woke up in the infirmary, confused about what had happened. He couldn't recall who or what had attacked him. Setting aside the mental fog, he looked around. The night was clear through the window, he might have been out for about two hours. He reached for his glasses on a nearby table, putting them on to see clearly. To his pleasant surprise, Ochako was sleeping on one side of the bed, looking adorable and innocent with her perpetual blush. If everything went well after the festival, they planned to reveal their relationship to everyone. Ida could finally say he was Ochako's boyfriend, and they would live happily. Ida whispered, Ochako, to the brown-haired girl, who furrowed her brow slightly. It's time to wake up, he said, gently shaking her shoulder. Ochako exclaimed, eh? Ida. And hugged him tightly. The surprise was significant, especially since they hadn't been told who attacked him. Worried, she asked, are you okay? Does anything hurt? Completely recovered, Ida smiled at her. Recovery interrupted sternly, if you're going to behave like this, go to the dorms. This isn't the place for your romantic moments. Ochako protested, aren't you going to check on him? Recovery replied tiredly, it was a blow to the stomach, he only had a bruise, and it's already healed. He just needed rest. Ida thanked recovery girl and asked about the time. Ochako informed him it was almost midnight, surprising Ida. He checked his phone, and indeed, it was 11.43. Ochako teased him about the strong hit he took, and Ida explained it was during a search for Hatsum, involving Class B. He couldn't recall much, just a dark force overpowering him. Realizing the severity, Ida decided to uncover Class B's secret. 
In the following days, with Ochako, he observed the rival class's peculiar behavior during training. The mysterious circumstances raised suspicions. Despite facing challenges, Ida was determined to surpass them. The story concluded with Ida and Ochako deciding to investigate the Class B activities, trying to understand their peculiar training routines. The mystery deepened as they observed the rival class facing unique challenges, raising more questions about their abilities. That's how they spent the whole week, one less of the four they had before the sports festival began. They decided to stop the investigation and focused on their own training and the challenging tasks their sensei assigned them. Despite the secrecy, Ida and Uraka were sure it wouldn't be enough to surpass their rivals. After all, Class A had the three big names of UA, winning would be easy. Yui, no. My legs, she spoke tiredly. It was Monday of the second week, and she thought it was a good idea to go for a run like her green-haired friend did. A terrible idea. Izuku, I told you it wasn't easy, and yet you came, could. The raven-haired girl squinted her eyes, looking at him reproachfully. Why Yui? Yui, I didn't think you'd run almost 10 kilometers to start the day, she said tired and a bit annoyed. This week, she tried to get the green-haired friend to call her by her name, but he seemed unwilling to do so. Izuku, I used to do it before. It's strange now, he looked at the sky turning orange, dawn had arrived. Yui, I understand, she tried to stand up without success, she was too tired. Could you carry me? She asked without a trace of shame. She knew from Kanoko that the green-haired guy's back was like a pillow, and today she would find out if it was true. Izuku, oh, sure, the freckled guy took her like a princess, managing to blush the usually expressionless girl a bit. Yui, sorry for waking you up so early, Midoriya-san, she spoke normally, trying to dispel her nervousness. Izuku, no problem, could, the look from the raven-haired girl promised trouble if he continued not to call her by her name. Why Yui? The journey continued with the raven-haired girl trying to get her friend to loosen up and be more relaxed. She wanted to let him know that she would be there for him. Fortunately, the freckled guy lowered his guard a bit, not enough to say he felt relaxed with her, but a bit. It was noticeable in the tension of his muscles that Yui felt perfectly against herself. Setsuna, well, well, Yui Chan in the arms of Midoriya Kun, did you let her rest, tiger? She spoke with grace, causing the raven haired girl to blush and hide her face in the freckled guy's chest. Izuku, rest? Could. A pinch on his arm made him reconsider his words. Yui woke me up and asked for help, nothing more. Setsuna, and what help, she said, increasing the embarrassment for the raven-haired girl. You left her incapacitated, Midoriya kun The freckled guy looked at the girl in his arms with some fear. Izuku, I wasn't that rough, right? He asked the girl, who fake coughed in an attempt to calm down. Yui, ignore her, Midoriya-san. She's just a fool who doesn't understand anything the raven-haired girl carefully got out of her friend's arms and stretched. Thanks for accompanying me for a run. Izuku, you're welcome, he left them and went to his room. He smelled awful, and surely, if the class president saw him, she would scold him or at least throw a bucket of water on his head. The third week arrived, and tension filled the air between the two hero classes in their final year. It was clear to everyone that class A would easily win, or so believed the marketing classes looking to benefit from the situation. What no one knew were the intense trainings class B underwent to surpass their peers. Each student trained rigorously to be strong with or without their quirks, and their tough personal trainer started showing results. In just one more week, true fighters would be revealed. Aizawa, I didn't think they'd make it, he looked surprised at the pile of papers on his desk, his class had succeeded. Ida, never doubt us, Aizawa sensei, be it a mountain or a simple task, we are the best and we will prove it, he declared, filling his classmates with pride. Aizawa, I wonder where they learned that from, he muttered, audible only to a confused girl who looked at her teacher. Well done, you have the rest of the day off. The class left the room joyfully, unaware that the teacher was tossing the papers into the trash, he wasn't going to check over 4,000 pages. He had done his part, his class hadn't trained enough, and he let class B take charge. Maybe now he'd gather the courage to talk to Midoriya. Shoto, where are we going to train? He asked a bit eagerly. He hadn't trained in three weeks because of the infernal workload and was eager for a good session. Momo, we can ask the director to find out which gym or place is available, the class nodded and headed to the director. Nezu, I regret to say that Gym Gamma is occupied by Class 3B, and the USJ is being used by Class 2A, Gym Beta by 1A. I'm sorry, but there's no space, 
The class representative and his companion looked at each other, this wasn't expected. Ida, no place at all? He didn't want to sound desperate, but he needed a place to train. He still had that bitter taste from being knocked out by an inferior. Nezu, I'm sorry. 13 requested the USJ in advance for his class, and class 3B booked the four weeks of the month for training, he said calmly. Midoriya was meticulous with his request, and Nezu didn't refuse. He wanted to see the results the green-haired student could produce. Momo, I understand, director. Thank you very much for your time, she took Ida before he could make a scene. Ida, I can't believe this, he said frustrated with the director. This was unacceptable. Toru, what happened? Everyone looked with interest at their classmates, puzzled by Ida's furrowed brow. Momo, all the places are taken, the class looked puzzled, and Kaminari had a great idea. Kaminari, maybe Kachan can talk to All Might and get us a place. After all, he's his successor, he grinned at the blonde, who smiled wickedly. Kyoka, is it really a good idea? Can't we just wait for them to finish and then ask for it? She gave her opinion, and the class president approached her somewhat threateningly. Ida, while we wait, others are getting stronger. We must do our best to get stronger too, he looked at Katsuki seriously, Baku go, ask All Might. Katsuki, calm down. I would do it even if you didn't ask, idiots. He calmly walked through the halls, and his classmates went to their dorm, at least they would train something there. Katsuki moved ahead, visible to everyone in UA. The girls looked at him with a slight blush, and the boys were excited to have the next symbol of peace nearby. Just a week ago, the retired symbol of peace, All Might, declared that he personally endorsed the blonde, and the media already labeled him as his successor. Fortunately for All Might, the news hadn't reached Nezu's ears. Katsuki, All Might. He entered his mentor's office, who was having tea, contemplating how to tell Midoriya to pass on one for all. All Might, Bakugo Shannon. Smiling, he let the blonde sit on the sofa in front of him. What brings you here? Katsuki, I need a favor. I have nowhere to train, and Nezu says every place is occupied. The retired hero nodded, understanding what he wanted. All Might, I understand. Go to Jim Gamma while I talk to the director. He stood up and went straight to his superior's office. As much as the director was a rat, his successor needed to train. The explosive blonde, on the other hand, left the dorm with a smile. He had managed to secure a place to train. The excitement was more than evident. He hated not being able to train and cursed his sensei silently. His indignation was so great that he went to the director to accuse him of not letting them train. However, the rat was smart, and any argument the blonde had was easily dismissed. He would fire him when he became number one and had enough influence. He just had to wait, and that rat would go back to the lab. Mina, Katsu, the pink-haired girl approached the blonde flirtatiously, having a fun idea she'd like to explore with the most powerful one. Katsuki, what do you want, raccoon eyes? He asked, tired, and the pink-haired girl smiled. Mina, since we have some time, I'd like you to help me with something. She grabbed him by the shirt collar and dragged him to her room. They had things to discuss. Twenty minutes later, Katsuki arrived with Mina. Both looked a bit exhausted and disheveled. No one in the class said anything, they just looked hopefully at the powerful Katsuki, who smiled arrogantly. Katsuki, let's go to Jim Gamma, All Might takes care of everything else. A shout of excitement sounded, and the class headed straight to the gym. In Jim Gamma, Class B and their teacher were resting. Today was a heavier day than usual, Izuku had made them double their efforts and deceived them with food to give their 200%, and it had worked. Kamakiri could produce blades more versatilely and quickly, Monoma could use copied quirks for a longer time and two at the same time for only three minutes, Kendo had improved her martial arts and grew an inch and a half taller, Kanoko could spread her spores to more places in less humid areas. They were ready. The class watched in amazement as Izuku trained, swinging from here to there with his whips, perfectly mastering floating for more control. His partner was a beast, that was clear. On the other side of the door, the very excited Class A was opening the door with Uraka in the lead. She wanted to be the first to try her new move. Uraka, huh? Class A looked at Class B and their teacher. Katsuki, didn't you say it would be just you? The blonde stepped forward and looked at the extras a bit angrily. Katsuki, what are you doing here? He shouted in anger. This place is supposed to be ours. Kendo, Director Nezu let us use the gym for this week, Bakugo. Her cold and serious tone didn't intimidate the blonde, who approached. You shouldn't be here. Katsuki, and who's going to stop me, you? He mocked the president, 
who was about to enlarge her hand and crush him. Vlad King, she won't, but I will, Baku go. The teacher stood in front of his student seriously. Leave, this belongs to class B. Katsuki, don't make me laugh, extra. One call, and I'll have you in a dumpster for eternity. He mocked the teacher, who remained serious. Get lost, losers. The real heroes are going to train. Izuku, a true hero doesn't treat others like that. Everyone looked up and were surprised. It hit Ida, Uraka, Todoroki, and Bakugo with strong memories. You're nothing but an idiot with delusions of grandeur, Bakugo, he declared angrily, leaving class A stunned. Katsuki, no. It can't be, the shock overwhelmed him. Midoriya Izuku stood there on the roof with whips in his arms, emitting a faint green aura. Ida, you. Todoroki, this is, he didn't expect to see him like this, especially with such hatred. Uraka, D.D. Deku-kun. Uraka, D.D. Deku-kun? Surprise took over her, she hadn't seen him in a long time, and the surprise was extreme. Ida, Midoriya? Surprised, he looked at the green-haired one hanging like a bat, what are you doing? Why are you with class B? Katsuki, finally realized how useless you are and went with the weak, huh? He said with a smirk, you said you'll stop me, please. You're a worthless loser. Do you really think you can beat me? He shouted arrogantly. Two years ago, maybe Deku won in several occasions, but now it was like comparing a cockroach to an elephant. The useless Deku had no chance to win, let's do something pointless, you against me, the first one to hit the other wins, he smiled at the freckled one, who just nodded. The blonde walked to the center of the area, expecting the green-haired one to come down, but surprise, he was already in his spot with a bored look. Damn idiot, mocking the greatness of the almighty Bakugo Katsuki. Kaminari, this will end quickly, that idiot won't even get close to Kachan, he said confidently, treating it like a child's play. Mina, it's impossible for Katsu to lose, she shouted excited about the imminent victory of her. Could she call him a boyfriend after this? Vlad King, never count your chickens before they hatch, he declared, but it fell on deaf ears. Katsuki, hope you're ready, Deku, this will end quickly like before, he smiled, releasing an explosion to scare his opponent, but he didn't flinch, ready to lose? Not a sound, now. In the blink of an eye, the almighty Bakugo Katsuki, the next number one hero, the first of the three greats, successor to All Might, the great hero Dynamite, blasted through the gym wall, leaving a trail wherever his unconscious body went until it stopped near the main facilities of the academy. That's right, the most powerful in everyone's eyes was defeated by a simple punch from Midoriya Izuku, who looked calm with his fist raised and, most notably, two extended fingers. It only took him two fingers to defeat Katsuki, no one could believe it. Mina, huh? Where's Katsu? She said not believing what happened. Ida, impossible, he spoke with surprise and excitement in his voice. Shoto, with just one blow, he didn't know how to feel. Oh Chako, Katsuki, where is he? This must be a tactic, right? To make him overconfident and attack with his guard down, right? She looked at her boyfriend for confirmation but only saw surprise. Vlad King, Midoriya, the freckled one looked bored with the situation, even dared to yawn as if he hadn't just sent the best of the best flying, bring the blonde. Izuku, fine, a black whip came out of his arm, and he went to get Katsuki, bringing him by one leg and lifting him in front of the green-haired one. Mina, Katsuki, she shouted in fear, the blonde had blood on his head as well as his arms and legs. Suyu, disgusting, ribbit. Momo, and he could do that with just one blow? The raven-haired girl looked at the freckled one, who placed the blonde unconscious on a stretcher. Kirishima, Baku bro, the redhead didn't take long to go to his friend and brother from another mother. Followed by Mina and Saro, Kaminari was still in shock, smiling. Mina, the director will know about this, and when he does, he'll expel you, damn Deku, she declared before leaving followed by her class. Izuku's gaze was too terrifying to say anything. Kendo, I'm not in favor of using extreme force against. Izuku, extreme force? He looked confused at the class president, not understanding what she meant, I just used 1% plus minimal fa jin, gave the least I could, the class looked amazed at the green-haired one. Kanoko, you mean the least power caused that? She couldn't even think about what would happen if he used all he had. Ibera, God protects souls so horrible that cross your path, Midoriya-san. Izuku, I guess, with that said, the freckled one yawned and left, I'm sleepy, I'm going to sleep, good night. Kuroiko, it's only 10 in the morning, 
she murmured with a touch of amusement. This obviously became known, and almost no one believed it. It was unthinkable that the great Bakugo Katsuki would lose to someone like the weird guy in 3B. No one refuted it either, mainly because Midoriya's empty gaze made them step back. Thus, the rumor of someone superior to the three great spread like wildfire. Mina obviously spoke up, and to her surprise, the director did nothing. The excuse he gave was simple, both supported the idea, if someone got hurt, it would be an obvious conclusion. It upset her, and she wanted to get back at Izuku, but looking at him so empty made her abandon that idea, fear got the better of her. With that, the week of rumors passed, and soon the much-awaited sports festival began. As every year for the third-year students, director Nezu was the presenter. No one could deny that, for the smartest being on the planet, he looked adorable on stage with his mini-microphone. Nezu, welcome, everyone, to the third-year sports festival, cheers of excitement filled the stadium, things were starting strong, please, all students, enter. P. Mike, okay, let's get ready? He said with excitement, introducing Class 3A, the powerful victors for two consecutive years, will they maintain their triumph for another year? Class A entered the stadium with honor and pride, with Bakugo as their leader, followed by them, specialists in teamwork, will they achieve victory, or will they stay at the gates like a year ago? Class B, the nervous class entered with Kendo as their leader, followed by Tetsu Tetsu and Midoriya, who looked bored, followed by these classes of monumental power. The general courses and others, he said disdainfully, at this point, students didn't care anymore, winning wasn't important in the third year. Nezu, thank you to all participants. I ask for your total attention for what will happen, he said, and the stadium fell silent, as every year, and to make it more fun, the first and second tests will be randomly selected by a roulette. Will they have an easy path or an uphill battle? Only the roulette will decide. The will appeared on the big screen, and everyone hoped it would be something easy like in the first year. Bakugo just waited for the moment to get back at the green-haired one. With slow steps, it finally stopped, causing a smile on the mouse dog bear. Nezu, we have our first event. Danger maze, shouts of excitement were heard, the students could somewhat anticipate what would happen, it's simple, the students will have to enter a maze created in a place near the stadium, right below, actually. The first 42 to arrive will move on to the next round. Are you ready for this? You have 5 minutes to get into position while the maze is prepared. The classes dispersed into their own groups, figuring out ways to pass or some who had a certain rivalry for some reason. The most noticeable were the rivalries between 3A, Todoroki and Bakugo, Mina and Uraka. For that reason, both Momo and Kirishima approached their rivals from the other class to talk more as friends than rivals. Kirishima, let's give it our all, Tetsu bro, the grey-haired one looked at him and just turned away, ignoring the raised fist of the redhead, what's up? Tetsu Tetsu, ask your beloved Bakugo, apparently, some friends are more important than others, with that said, he moved closer to Izuku, having managed to get a little closer to the freckled one. Momo, Kendo, let's do our best together, she said to the orange-haired one, who ignored her, causing confusion in the vice president, Kendo? Kendo, don't you have someone better to give words of encouragement to? With that said, she went with Yui, everyone had to be prepared. The five minutes passed, and to have something fairer in this, the classes put everyone at random. Unfortunately for Izuku, he ended up next to Mina, who looked at the green-haired one with suspicion. Nezu, on your marks, everyone except Izuku took their positions, ready? The excitement was palpable, go. Everyone except one ran straight to the dark laboratory that provided the event. One minute before the event started, Mina glared at Midoriya with infinite hatred. Due to the humiliating defeat, her romantic interest couldn't reconnect with her romantically. Bakugo became obsessed with training to the point where Aizawa had to stop him, fearing he might lose his arms. Mina had to act now and show how useless Deku was. So, upon learning he was beside her, she didn't hesitate to start her incredible plan. Mina, better retreat, idiot. You won't even make it past here, she taunted the freckled one, who had his gaze in the sky, what's wrong? Are you so stupid that you can't understand anything? They probably accepted you out of pity, useless bonebreaker, she continued her mockery to crush the little confidence the green-haired one had left. But there was no reaction. Izuku, huh? Did someone say something? I don't usually listen to bitches talking, he replied with some annoyance. He was no longer Deku, the one who let others walk all over him. He wouldn't allow it anymore. Mina, you damn, she squinted her eyes, and just as they started, she threw acid at Izuku's shoes. Quickly, he took them off and stood still, 
watching as the others went ahead. P. Mike, A. Eh? Midoriya Izuku is at the back? What's happening? People looked at the freckled one, many didn't recognize him, some thought he gave up and was about to leave. But to their surprise, the barefooted freckled one calmly walked towards the entrance of the maze, I guess this is a strange way to start. Izuku moved slowly towards the dimly lit area, just enough to see where he was going. The prominent darkness that Kuroiro would surely exploit to exit the place quickly. Without overthinking, he followed his plan to be among the first 42. Labyrinths are easy to cross, you just have to cling to a wall and follow it. This ensures you cover the entire place and eventually find the exit. But there was a slight problem. Izuku, the walls are moving, it was a subtle movement, and in the darkness, it was barely visible, but the freckled one could feel it under his feet. The mechanism moved the walls to change the maze every two minutes, there must be a pattern, without further ado, he advanced slowly, getting lost in the area until he reached where many students, including Bakugo, were, cursing for not knowing where to go. Katsuki, it must be this way, he propelled himself with explosions down a lane to the right, he was starting to go crazy with this. Let's follow Dynamite, he surely knows the way, a support course girl said, and everyone followed like sheep behind their shepherd. Izuku, in a minute and a half, it will change, but to where? He said in a low voice and sat down to wait. There was time to exit, he just had to understand the place, hmm? The ground vibrated a bit, and the lane to the right and in front of the freckled one closed, opening two behind him and one to his left, from which Bakugo came out, surprised to see Izuku in the same circular spot. Katsuki, ah, he released an explosion into the air. He had been here for two minutes and understood nothing, this way, he continued down a corridor behind the freckled one, followed by others who looked at Izuku strangely, thinking he had already given up. So, he kept analyzing the place, watching Bakugo go from one place to another without reaching anywhere other than the same point. Desperation overcame him, just seeing the total calmness on the green-haired one's face. Katsuki, all of this is your fault, he was about to attack the freckled one, but he stood up and went to the lane he had come from, getting lost just when the blonde saw the wall move, damn Deku. The green-haired one moved at a calm pace, following the wall that had closed behind him. The mechanism was simple, it turned clockwise for three laps before moving randomly for five laps and then another three laps counterclockwise. The freckled one kept counting the seconds until he stopped in front of the exit, walking slowly with the idea that the class. No, his class had already left. P. Mike, and in second place, Midoriya Izuku, he declared with surprise as everyone looked puzzled, incredible, the last one was among the first, only behind Kuro Iroshihai, he declared with excitement, and the freckled one looked at his classmate, who smiled, sitting on the ground, waiting for the others. Izuku, sure was easy for you. After all, we were almost in complete darkness, he went at a slow pace to sit beside his teammate. Kuro Iro, not so much, maybe you taught me how to move between the smallest shadows, but doing it in such a complex mechanism was difficult, he looked at the freckled one, who laid down with tranquility, thanks for the training, Midoriya. Izuku, don't mention it, he said, letting himself be carried away by this moment of peace. P. Mike, in third place, Yaoyorozu Momo, he declared with excitement. The raven-haired girl came out tired, the maze mechanism was confusing to understand, and surprise, the green-haired one was next to the grey-haired one, sleeping in the middle of the field, fourth place Yanagi Reiko. Fifth place Kendo Itsuka. And so on, more and more came out until finally the last one came out with a lot of stored anger. And to everyone's surprise. P. Mike, last place, Bakugo Katsuki, he declared with surprise, if this first event has taught me anything, it's not to be swayed by the positions, the last ones were the first, and the first ones were the last. The crowd's shout of excitement sounded pleasingly, while Bakugo looked at the leaderboard. He ended up last, and from the top of class B scum. This would make him pay in the next event. It took him a long time to figure out the maze's trick, and if it weren't for an extra from the general course, he wouldn't have made it through. Nezu, your attention, please, winners of the first event, said the director with traces of cheese on his cheeks, somehow making him look more adorable, the time has come to decide the second event of the day. I hope it's just as exciting, the roulette began to spin, causing tension among the 42, and it is. Ring search, the cry was heard, and the participants looked puzzled and nervous, the game is simple. In teams of four, you have to collect rings from other teams or those on the field. The first four teams with the most points win. For obvious reasons, each participant has a ring with a value that escalates according to your position in the previous event. P. Mike, these are the values of each participant, starting from the last to the first. B. 
Akugo Katsuki equals 200 points. Ida Tenya equals 300 points. Uraka Ochako equals 400 points. Kuro Iroshihai equals 8,400 points. All eyes were on the gray-haired one, who felt intimidated by so much attention. Bakugo would go for the first spot, and surely no one would want to be with the guy with the dark quirk for having so many points. He'd have to leave the competition. Izuku, Kuro Iro, his salvation appeared, offering him a hand. Behind him, Yanagi and Kendo smiled at him, time to play. Kuro Iro, yes, he approached his team. They had time while they prepared the test, and there were things to plan. The test will take place in the forest near the stadium. Participants will be randomly placed apart from each other. When it starts, everyone will collect rings placed in the area or those with the most value. The top four with the most points win, but this seemingly simple event could lead to a war between students. Nezu, all right, the preparation time is over, and the teams are ready to begin, he spoke, causing cheers for favorites Todoroki and Bakugo. All right, the stadium screen showed various angles of all the teams. Let the second event of this sports festival begin. An alarm sounded, and everyone started seeking the first position. The leading team was Midoriya, Kendo, and Yanagi, followed by Ida, Uraka, Yaoyorozu, and Tokoyami, both teams being white due to their high points. Next was the marvelous 3B team, Manoma, Jirota, Juzo, and Tetsu Tetsu. Surprisingly, the most supported team consisted of the three big names united with Kaminari, who attached himself to absorb some fame and stand out for his own harem of beautiful girls. Unfortunately, Mina couldn't even reach the middle of the maze because the mechanism was too intricate for her rose-minded brain. Kendo, do you understand the plan, right? The orange-haired girl assumed the leadership role, as usual, and had the craziest plan Izuku had ever heard. Izuku, the president scares me, he said, hiding behind Reiko, who used Izuku's messy hair as a soothing tool, it was fluffy. Kendo, I know, that's why you should stop drinking if you don't want to face my wrath, Midoriya san. She smiled very kindly, much to Izuku's liking, who continued next to the ghostly girl. Reiko, Kendo, don't scare him like that. She said, placing Midoriya on her thighs and caressing him. She's lying, Midoriya san, she wouldn't harm you. Kendo, can you stop spoiling him? She shouted angrily. It's a serious situation. Izuku, just because it's serious doesn't mean we have to get tense. Hmm? A slight pain in his neck revealed who was nearby, an idiot with extreme hatred and a desire to kill. Bakugo is heading from south to northwest, 400 meters away. Kendo, all right, they started moving. She looked serious at the wooded area. Sooner or later, they'll be close. Midoriya san, you know what to do. Izuku, understood, president. He stood up and shot a burst of air into the sky, slightly damaging the trees and revealing his location. Time for mind games. Kendo, Kuro Iro must be near the other place. How long do you think it'll take us to get there? She asked the freckled boy, who felt nearly every team heading in their direction. Izuku, one minute if I go with both. He said, dodging a piece of ice that lodged into a tree. Todoroki and Bakugo emerged from the depths, looking unfriendly. To their left, Ida carried Uraka, and beside them were Tsuyu and Shoji. Class A members stared at the three from Class B. Neither Uraka nor Ida understood why the green-haired boy was with them, but they would find out now. Katsuki, Deku, he said angrily to the freckled boy, who looked bored at the blonde. This time, I'm going to leave you in a hospital bed permanently. Uraka, Deku-kun, the girl spoke anxiously, looking at the indifferent green-haired boy. Shoto, I don't understand why you switched to the other class, but you made a mistake, Midoriya. Suyu, whatever happened, we can solve it together, Midoriya-chan. Karo. She said, ready to use her tongue to grab the rings in Reiko's hands. Izuku, tell me something, class A, he spoke, causing nervousness among his old friends. When did I change classes? Uraka, two weeks ago, and I don't understand why you did it, Deku-kun. She said, hurt, her friend was acting strangely. Izuku, two weeks, huh? He said, hurt, it took them a month and a half to notice he was gone. You're wrong, Asui. The frog was startled, he hadn't called her that since they met. You say you'll solve the problem together? I don't believe it. This doesn't interest you, and certainly not me. He dodged a point-blank explosion from Bakugo effortlessly, then kicked him back to Todoroki. I don't regret changing classes. Yanagi, now, the grey-haired girl threw the four rings she had in her hands, guiding them away. Class A, you need a more exciting search. 
Saying this, she released a smoke curtain that covered everything, taking Reiko on her back and Kendo in a bridal style. Reiko, they'll realize instantly. She spoke to her leader, who was attentive to her surroundings. Kendo, when they do, will be on the other side of the field, safe. Trust me, Reiko-chan. She spoke to reassure her teammate, who continued to maintain her quirk as much as possible. It took them five minutes to reach the meeting point with Kuro Iro, who was installed in a hollow tree in the southern part of the area. Reiko sent the rings north so that when they realized the trap, they would be absurdly far away, giving them no time to follow. They arrived in seven minutes due to a slight disruption in their route. Two support teams were fighting each other for a golden ring worth 100 points on a rock. That forced them to take a route that took an extra minute, but they finally reached the hollow tree with Kuro Iro, a perfect hiding place that took advantage of the team's quirks. Kuro Iro, you took too long. He spoke mockingly as Izuku laid the president on the ground and the ghost on a piece of wood. Kendo, there were setbacks, but everything is ready. She said, discreetly looking outside. Do you have them? Kuro Iro, of course, Kendo. He smiled at the president, revealing four rings of exceptional value, the team's worth. Reiko, an idea that could have cost us a lot, but it's very good. She spoke, resting in her place. Right, Midoriya-san? She looked at the freckled boy, who was staring at a point outside. Midoriya-san? Izuku, someone is approaching. He said, extending his whips to cover Kendo and Yanagi with him. Kuro Iro simply went into a wall with the whips just as Dark Shadow entered through a small opening, looking carefully at the place. Dark Shadow, nothing here, he shouted to his carrier and friend before leaving. Kuro Iro, that was close. He sighed just as the tree shattered, and Tokoyami looked at the 3B team. Tokoyami, I'm not so easy to fool. If there are no rings, it's perfect for hiding. He said as his quirk joined him. Midoriya, I don't want to do this as a great friend, but I have too. Izuku, friend? He spoke with a touch of irritation. If you were such a friend, where were you the month I was in the hospital? Where were you when Shinso was in critical condition? Where were you when they forgot about me? He said angrily, to which the bird looked amazed. You're not my friend, just an idiot who thought it was fun to play with my friendship. He was about to hit him, but an alarm sounded. P. Mike, time, he said happily, and Izuku just retreated with his team. When Bakugo arrived at the stadium, he was pretty sure he was in the top. After all, he not only had his intact points but also the ones Deku had thrown uselessly. Surely, the idiot thought of recovering them later while they were in a free-for-all, but that wasn't the case. The free-for-all was him and Todoroki, wiping out everyone. Shoto, Bakugo, the bicolor pointed with surprise at the screen. Katsuki, what's up, half and half? What? What he saw was clear, and there was nothing wrong, but for him, it was stupidity. Kirishima, now that I realize, Baku bro, these rings are worth 10 points each. The screen showed who advanced to the next and last event of the day, and Bakugo couldn't be angrier. First place. Kuro Iroshihai. Kendo Itsuka. Midoriya Izuku. Yanagi Reiko. Second place. Manoma Nato. Shishida Jirota. Honanuki Juzo. Tetsu 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 Tetsu. Third place. Bakugo Katsuki. Todoroki Shoto. Kirishima Eijiro. Kaminari Denki. Fourth place. Yaoyorozu Momo. Ida Tenya. Uraka Ochako. Tokoyami Fumikage. Nezu, these are the ones who advanced to the next and last event of the day, the cry of excitement was heard, despite the commotion of the three greats being in third place. The roulette will reveal how the one-on-one -on -one battles will be shortly. He said, smiling. It didn't take long for the matchups to be seen, and Kaminari smiled arrogantly. He got an easy match against one from Class B and would make them fall with everything, and the best part was that he was first. Many girls would see how incredible he was. Midoriya Izuku vs. Kaminari Denki. Tetsu 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 vs. Kirishima Eijiro. Kendo Itsuka vs. Yaoyorozu Momo. Honanuki Juzo vs. Todoroki Shoto. Yanagi Reiko vs. Uraka Ochako. Kuro Iro Shihai vs. Ida Tenya. Manoma Nato vs. Shishida Jirota. Bakugo Katsuki vs. Tokoyami Fumikage. Nezu, the battles will take place in an hour. You have until then to prepare, and as usual for those who didn't make it to the final event, mini contests and small scale events have been prepared for them to participate in. 
the excitement and tension were felt in the air. Who will win, and who will lose? Can Bakugo remain undefeated for the third year, or will he be defeated? Many questions, few answers. The classes went to different places after the class ended. Now that the pressure had eased and they had a moment of peace, they would make the most of it. Class B went to their designated place to wait for the battles, while Class A had to drag Bakugo with them after he almost attacked the winning team from the previous event. Pony, sorry, Midori Akun. After all the training, we couldn't pass. She said sadly and frustrated. Her friend's effort didn't amount to much. Izuku, don't say that. He put his hand on the girl's head, gently caressing, you did your best, and that's what matters, much more than winning. I'm proud of everyone. Pony, th, thanks, Midori Akun. She said with a blush. It was the first time someone had touched her like that, and it felt good. Izuku, do you ever feel like a whole army wants to claim your head for a silly reason? He asked, surprised because his danger sense was active, and he couldn't even identify where it was coming from. Yui, I wonder why that is. She spoke neutrally, trying to dissipate her jealousy. She also wanted to be pampered. Yanagi, it must be your imagination, Midoriya-san. She said with a pout. Izuku, I suppose, he didn't dwell on it and walked calmly towards the class's stand, shall we? On the other side, in class A, there was a tense atmosphere. Not only were the big three surpassed, but they were surpassed by Deku, the seemingly useless one. Their pride was deeply wounded, and they were determined not to lose again. Kaminari, guys, guys, calm down. He said cheerfully, Midoriya is facing me, it's pretty certain he won't even be able to touch me. He spoke arrogantly and very confident of winning. Momo, I remember Midoriya defeating Bakugo with a single blow. Do you really think you can? She asked, doubtful of her classmate. Kaminari, that was a lucky shot, Kachan got something in his eye and couldn't do anything. He excused his friend, who snorted in anger, besides, he probably still breaks his bones with the slightest use of his quirk, a loser who will always be a loser. Kirishima, I'm sure Kaminari can do it, let's trust him. The hour passed, and the much-anticipated encounter between the fighters from different classes was about to begin. Excitement filled the air, and the audience couldn't wait for it to start. P. Mike, testing, testing, he tapped the microphone lightly to see if it worked, all right. I hope you're ready because the final event of UA Sports Festival is about to begin, he said with joy, causing cheers from the crowd, on one side, we have the Thunder Titan, the 1WHO shocks you with a touch, the 1WHO defeated a villain squad with a single blow. Denki Kaminari. The blonde entered the stage with a big ovation, looking at his fans, some of them beautiful girls, urging him to finish this fight with a single blow, just like against the villains during that fight with the League of Villains. P. Mike, on the other side, the festival's surprise, the 1WHO never gives up against anything and anyone, with a mind as quick and amazing as director Nezu himself, introducing Izuku Midoriya. The freckled boy came out looking like he wanted to sleep, stretching his legs after Kanoko used him as a chair. There was no ovation, just murmurs and indiscreet looks from the people. Nobody recognized the name, and much less the face. The green-haired boy was sure that several girls in the stands had fantasized about him more than three times. P. Mike, as usual, Midnight will be the referee in these cases. The plus 18 heroine entered with a coquettish look and a calm pace. Midnight, all right, listen up. She cracked her whip against the ground, neither of the two paid complete attention, knowing well what she would say, the rules are simple, if you leave the ring, you lose. If you immobilize your opponent for a few seconds, you win. There's also the option to surrender if you can't fight anymore. Are you ready? She looked at both competitors, Kaminari nodded arrogantly, Izuku did it lazily, good. Begin. In an instant, Kaminari extended two fingers, shooting a lightning bolt at Izuku, who easily dodged it, surprising the blonde. Maybe this would take more than one hit. Kaminari, give up, Deku. You're no match for me, he said cheerfully while shooting more lightning from his fingers. Izuku dodged effortlessly, and Pony's horns were moving faster. With my great power, you can't do anything. Izuku didn't respond, he just looked at the blonde, seeing how his fingers seemed to numb. It was the moment. Kaminari, this is too easy, he said with a laugh, trying to shoot a lightning bolt, but nothing came out. Huh? He looked at his numb fingers. He didn't realize that Izuku had instantly appeared in front of him and punched him, sending him to the edge. The crowd was surprised, the great charge bolt was in trouble. Izuku, what idiot uses electricity so foolishly? 
he asked quietly as the blonde slowly got up. Izuku didn't want it to end quickly, he wanted to have some fun. Kaminari, relax, people. I just let him hit me as a goodwill gesture. He said to his fans, who praised him for his actions, that almost broke my nose, I didn't account for this, he nervously thought. His plan to scare Midoriya with his quirk control had failed miserably. As the great fighter I am, Midoriya, I've decided to show you the attack I used against the villains that time. Consider yourself honored. He said arrogantly, and the crowd was surprised. Fanatic, the great charge bolt is going to treat us with his most powerful attack, a fan, very enamored with the blonde, said. Another fan, go, charge bolt. Defeat him and show how great you are, shouted another. Kaminari, what an honor to be defeated by me, don't you think? He raised his hands, accumulating even more electricity than when he started at UA, it took me a long time to create and control it, a control you'll never have, you useless Deku, a white light was in his hands, the attack was at its maximum splendor. Say hello to the Thor, a powerful giant lightning bolt was launched at Izuku. There was no way to avoid it, it covered a lot of ground. If he dodged it, it would surely hit everyone behind him. He only had one option. There was a lot of smoke, and barely anything could be seen. No spectator knew what happened, not even Midnight, who was watching closely. The mist cleared, revealing Kaminari. Embedded in the wall, he had no upper part of his gym uniform, it had broken with his lightning-fast attack. People couldn't believe it, the great charge bolt was defeated. Midnight, Midoriya kun She asked, and then Izuku came out, releasing smoke and without part of his uniform, revealing how marked he was, much more than the blonde. His angry look was clear. Are you okay? The freckled guy walked to the center just when a glass hit him on the head. Huh? Person, boo, contrary to what Class B thought, the freckled guy received hatred from people throwing things at him. Another person, stupid idiot almost killed him, a girl shouted with hatred. Another person, he cheated, said another. Izuku, he just let the person continue while waiting for his teacher to react. See? This is what you get for making yourself noticed, the hatred of everyone. Why do you bother? They just hit you despite saving them, the freckled guy thought for a moment. Just then, someone spoke on the microphone in Mike's booth. Aizawa, quiet, shouted Class A's teacher. Don't you see that the one you're insulting saved you? If that attack had continued, it would have killed you by contact. He took the hit for you ungrateful people, the booze stopped for a moment. People finally came to their senses, their adoration for a hero led them not to think. Midnight, the winner is Midoriya Izuku, she finally said coming out of the shock, and the freckled guy left. Much contained anger would come out sooner or later. The stadium fell silent, except for the few who truly knew the truth and the present heroes who were surprised by enduring such an attack. When they reached the hallway, the freckled guy was greeted by Ibera, who had a towel to clean him. Izuku, shiosaki san this, the freckled guy thought she would say something against him, but instead, she just approached with the towel and cleaned his hair affectionately. Ibera, you did well? Midoriya san. She said in a calm tone. It doesn't matter what others say, you won fairly. Izuku, the freckled guy just let himself be cleaned and hugged. The green haired girl knew well how her companion felt. Ibera, don't torment yourself, Midoriya san, you did well. She stroked his hair and then took his hand. Let's go, soon Tetsu Tetsu will have to fight. Both left to go to the Class B area. The freckled guy was a bit dazed, and fortunately, his classmates were there to help him. The Class A fell silent as they watched their former classmate easily defeat Kaminari Denki, the fifth in terms of power in the class. What was worse, he endured Kaminari's maximum power, surviving a concentrated beam of energy that could leave a large squad in the hospital for months. The freckled guy turned out to be a tough nut to crack, catching them off guard. Kirishima, all right, now it's my turn, he said with excitement. He didn't quite understand why his metallic friend was acting so distant, hoping the fight would reveal something. Katsuki, you better not lose, idiot. We still have to fight, and I want to see how much I've progressed, he smiled at what he considered his best friend, who only nodded. On the other side, in class B, there was a tense moment. Tetsu Tetsu was nervous, filled with doubts. Last year, he didn't even pass the first test because of the redhead from class A. When he needed help, the redhead ignored him to help Baku go, and their friendship went downhill from there. Kirishima also received too much attention when the league fell, slowly distancing himself from Tetsu Tetsu. Izuku, don't overthink it, he said, grabbing a juice box. 
what torments you will only be resolved in this fight. So go ahead, let's see which wall is more unbreakable. Tetsu Tetsu, I guess you're right, Midoriya, he looked at the screen announcing his fight and then at his friends. Alright. I'll fight fair and win. With renewed energy, he went straight to the arena. It took a full five minutes before the next fight was announced, both class walls facing each other again, and there was already a clear winner for the crowd. P. Mike, alright, everybody. Here comes our first participant, he said excitedly, almost shattering the cabin glass. From class 3A, the unbreakable wall, ranked among the top three. A man of true valor who defends everyone. Dramatic pause. Kirishima Eijiro. The redhead entered to cheers, some saved by him on occasion shouting Red Riot. P. Mike, our second participant from Class 3B is the Great Defense, the ultimate guardian of the innocent, a barrier of molten metal that doesn't break no matter how hard you hit it. He gave a big smile. Tetsu 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 Tetsu. The gray-haired guy entered, looking serious at his opponent. He was going to overcome him no matter what. Midnight, alright, you know the rules. I expect a fair battle, she looked at both and smiled. Begin. Immediately, Tetsu Tetsu took the first hit, advancing to Kirishima and hitting his stomach with his activated quirk. The surprise was mild, and the redhead could withstand it, only being pushed back slightly. Kirishima tried to talk to his friend, but he responded with punches, causing the audience to get bored. The Great Red Riot seemed scared, which was stupid, but they believed it. Kirishima, if that's how you want it, Tetsu Tetsu. He activated his unbreakable mode, knowing the tin guy wouldn't do much harm, and if he did, it would be minimal. Tetsu Tetsu, that won't help you. His body made a strange sound, and the metal seemed to compress in the muscles of the grey-haired guy, revealing his latest form. Heavy Metal Compressor. The attack achieved the unthinkable and damaged Kirishima, who recoiled, surprised. His shoulder hurt like hell, and his opponent focused on that part, hitting as if there were no tomorrow, leaving him broken. Impossible, a purple guy in the audience spoke, a fan of the redhead. Red Riot was. He couldn't finish the sentence because of how unthinkable it was. Kirishima, how? He asked, holding the injured spot. Tetsu Tetsu, this is the value of limitless effort. While you were busy giving interviews about how you defeated many villains, I trained like crazy to surpass you, he said with a serious expression. But when Midoriya came and told what you guys did, my great respect for you disappeared. Now, I'm the one above you, Kirishima, he declared emotionally and went to hit the redhead. Kirishima, I don't know what you're talking about. Midoriya just abandoned us, he shouted, entering unbreakable mode, resisting the barrage of blows. Those interviews gave me incredible friends and recognition. Now more people know who defends them. Tetsu Tetsu, it doesn't matter if you're not with the one who supported you from the beginning, he said, taking Kirishima's arm and lifting it above his head. This ends here. He forcefully threw the redhead into the air, who fell slowly. I'll show you my most powerful attack, Iron Maiden. The grey-haired guy squeezed his enemy in a tight hug, and Kirishima couldn't withstand his unbreakable mode anymore, falling unconscious. Midnight, winner, Tetsu Tetsu, she declared, surprising the crowd. P. Mike, incredible fight, two walls considered equal, with one surpassing the other. Well done. He spoke excitedly with everything that happened that day. The silver-haired guy left tired and went straight to the infirmary. One more minute, and surely his strategy would fail because he couldn't maintain his transformation any longer. A difficult encounter overcome, and now the most complicated part followed. In Class A's box, the surprises left everyone in shock. The wall of the top three had been defeated by someone with lesser resistance. The unthinkable was happening, and they didn't know what would happen. It was clear they wouldn't be taken lightly anymore. P. Mike, next opponents, get ready for your match. He announced, and both the black-haired and the orange-haired left their seats with promises of victory for their classes. After a couple of minutes and the crowd settling down, they were finally ready for the third encounter in this event. Kritai against the orange-haired girl from Class B, rivals according to the black-haired girl and the main favorite to win. P. Mike, alright, let's start this. On one side, and for a change, we have a woman with powerful punches. Villains fear her lethal martial arts. She is Kendo Itsuka. The orange-haired girl entered seriously, not caring that she didn't receive adulation. P. Mike, now, let's go to the woman who creates everything. Her great intellect puts her as one of the great minds of the academy. Elegance and strength all in one. She is Yaoyorozu Momo. The shout of excitement was heard, and the black-haired girl came out more serious and confident than ever, 
ignoring the multiple compliments from fantastic guys and requests to go out together. Midnight, all right, ladies, I want a fair fight, she smiled and hit the floor excitedly. Begin. The rivals faced each other before going against each other. The heiress of her palm pulled out her faithful staff directly to hit the orange-haired girl, who avoided the weapon by ducking and pushing the black-haired girl with her palm increased three times. Momo, I don't understand why you're so angry with me, Kendo-san, but I'll win this, she said, positioning herself with her staff ready for the attack. Kendo, it doesn't matter anymore, Yaoyorozu, she said seriously. There was no need to talk after Yaoyorozu had been so busy with the rich kids her mom introduced her to and the multiple parties she never invited her to. They were no longer friends. The fight began to get wild. Momo was against the ropes, throwing devices to the ground and trying to make her opponent fall into traps, which she escaped with minimal damage or no damage at all. She didn't understand why her enemy didn't use her quirk to attack, but it was getting desperate. What did that mean? How different were they? How much distance was there between the two? Kendo, it ends here. With a kick to the stomach, the black-haired girl fell defeated. What happened, Yaoyorozu, is that you pushed me aside when I thought we were friends. You distanced yourself, and that hurt. She left the place as they had declared her the winner.